Today, I'll be introducing to you human-computer interaction. And I'm using the slide the, uh, made by Sai and Janaya. I hope I pronounced it correctly. So the contents of the introduction will be the human, or the contents of this slide will be the human, the computer, and the interaction. But this will be the first part of the series of videos. Now to understand human-computer interaction, let us first take a look at some, some sort of history of the computers. So the beginnings of computing in the year 1945. So in the year 1945, we have these computers, the Harvard Mark I. So as shown in the picture, so IBM Automatic Sequence Controlled Calculator, also known as Mark I, and the size is 55 feet long, 8 feet high, and it weighs 5 tons. So that's how big this computer is. And you know, this is just a calculator. And maybe if, we, if we're going to look closely at the picture, you can see how complex it is. So this is a computer or a calculator. Then here we have another computer. We have the ENIAC 1943, the first electronic numerical integrator and computer in the US. And you can see also the how this computer looks like. So we have a lot of switches, each other. And they are so quite so big. Here is another one. This is the first game that was developed on PDP during the 1960s. So again, we're using some sort of a big machine. Then here is another computer during the, the early days. So just take note of the panel and take a look at the more or less these devices here. Here's another machine during those years, the early years of computing. And what have we observed? So what interactions did we see? We can see that the interaction between the human and the computer is quite mechanical. So there are a lot of switches. <clears throat> and maybe we can say that there's poor feedback because uh, there are no, we have, uh, we have big machines, but there are only few monitors to give us some sort of feedback or output. And we can say that this is not for everybody. In the first place, who can afford to have a computer that big in their own homes? Or, uh, and who can actually uh, place those computers in your pocket? So the computers during those days are only used by specialists. So those who are trained to make use of the computer. So we also have process control, calculation. So these are more or less the things that are being done with the computer. And then, of course, just like what I've said a while ago, there's no intention to address the mass market. So these are only used by specialists. And of course, it was used by big businesses during those days. Now the development of HEI. So let's again take a look at what we have seen a while ago. So the early computers are extremely difficult to use because as we have said, uh, it needs specialists to make use of this computer and they're large and expensive. So by comparison, people time, labor is cheap during those days. So it's used by specialists and no knowledge about how to make the use, how to make use easier. So that's because, of course, only a few people are using the computers. So whether it's difficult or not, no problem because it should be only used by specialists and there should be some sort of a training before somebody can use these devices. Today, none of these conditions already hold or maybe just uh, 
almost none of this, if not none, at totally none. Because one thing is the development of pieces of personal computers, and that's because and that's the reason why almost none of this already exists. And then there's a shift to other interaction paradigms. So now we have, have small handheld devices like your cell phones, your PDAs, and mobility. So we can have our, uh, we can just place our cell phones in our pocket. We can, uh, laptops are portable. So we have mobility during those days as compared with the early computers. We're in there actually big and large and expensive. So now they are smaller and affordable. That's why more people now can make use of computers so uh let's go back to that so because of that since more computers now will be making use of computers and not only by specialists then it is now a special concern to make this or to make computers or maybe the applications used by this computer easy to use so not only by specialists but by everybody that's why I'm, as we can see more or less almost everybody if not everybody already have cell phones or most have their laptops at their homes so as, as compared with maybe the early computer uh, early computers or the early years of computing so with that what is HCI? HCI is the study of interaction between human or the users and computers so the interaction between users and computers is achieved via an interface and usually we call that the user interface. So if you're going to look at, let's take a look at the previous images. So just take a look at the user interface of this computer. It looks like more complex than that of uh, a, an airplane panel. So let's dissect more of HCI definition. So we have here the human, and this is the computer. And we could say that human also receives input and it actually thinks using the cognition. And of course, the human will see the user interface or will interact with the computer using the input and output devices the digital io and of course the computer is also processing those data and the, the human now will interact with this via the interface the user interface so let's say for example the interface says uh, these are the buttons so the human will click on the buttons or the interface says that you enter your name then the human will enter steam so that you are the human now is interacting with the computer and that's what we call the human computer interaction. And of course, the human human's action is, of course, uh, being controlled by cognition or the way he thinks. And of course, the digital computer now processes the data using the processor and the application. So this, there are disciplines contributing to HCI. So where does it come from? So we have to include computer science and technology and we also have to use cognitive psychology we have to know how humans think or how human uh, let's say uh, remember things or how human interact with things and we also have to uh, make our interface of course presentable so it's an art so we combine the technology the human psychology and art and the intersection among these three uh, disciplines is where we have HCI so if we uh, dissect that further so HCI today will have the following, uh, will involve the following, psychology, as I've said, 
It involves human psychology, designing, engineering, human factors, semiotics, philosophy, ethnography, user research, sociology, language, and computer science. So more or less our topics for this subject will cover some of this, if not all of this. And what are the principles of HCI? So one of the principles of HCI is usability. So it should be the application or the computer or the device should be useful. That means it can accomplish what is required. So functional and it does the things that it is uh, required and usable so if we say it's usable if we can do it easily and naturally without error and used so it make people want to use it so it should be attractive acceptable to the organization so that ends my introduction and uh, next in the next video we'll be talking about human so thank you very much for viewing this video.